Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about dividing rational numbers. And we already know that rational numbers mean fractions, they mean decimals, they can be positive, they can be negative. It's all of the above. You could have a positive fraction multiplied by a negative decimal, and that's rational numbers, except dividing, not multiplying. Multiplying was last time. Okay, so when you were in sixth grade, or whatever grade you were in, you probably heard somebody tell you to keep change flip don't write this down this is just a detour lesson to explain why this works when you keep change flip you're multiplying by the reciprocal so if I had 2 divided by 2 we know that 2 divided by 2 is 1 we know that so then why does keep change flip work if I can change it would I still get one so when I write whole numbers as a fraction you put them over a denominator of one so now we have two fractions and we're dividing okay so keep the first one two over one change this to multiplying and flip that to one half and then you multiply your fractions like you did last time 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So keep change flip isn't some magical different math that we don't understand. Keep change flip works. You still get 1. So keep that in mind as we move on. All right. Write this down. We are going to start with fractions because fractions are the ones that make everybody go oh so we're gonna start there and get it out of the way so if I have the fraction one half and I want to divide it by negative three now when I put that negative three inside the parentheses like this I'm only separating that negative sign from the division sign so that you don't end up with a sign next to a sign. And remember the last time we did something like this, we're gonna put our whole numbers over one. So all whole numbers, I'm gonna use the number sign, are over one. Because negative three divided by one is negative 3. So if I put a 1 underneath that, it's still negative 3. It just looks different. Alright, so when I'm dividing fractions, the first thing I need to do, I am going to, well, the first thing you need to do is make sure all of your fractions are improper. No mixed numbers. and whole numbers go over one. So this one, I've got negative three over one, and I am dividing one half by that. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that my problem is set up correctly so that I can do the next thing, which is keep change flip so the f next thing I'm going to do I'm going to keep it change it flip it flow cab has a really cool video keep change flip yeah that's the action everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions so I keep this one the same so K change this one to multiply and I'm going to flip this one over so that the one is over the three and this is still a negative this stays negative and we can keep that negative with the numerator keep the negative with the numerator and now we have multiplying fractions and we did that a couple lessons ago, so we know how to multiply fractions. 
So step three is we're going to multiply. And we know that we multiply top times top over bottom times bottom, top times top over bot times bot. So one times negative one is negative one. And two times three is six. Now, anytime I'm dealing with fractions, I have to make sure that it's a proper fraction, that it can't be simplified. This one is already simplified, but you should always check to make sure that it is written in simplest terms. Now, when I'm multiplying, this is where I'm paying attention to those integer rules. A positive times a negative is a negative. Positive times a positive is a positive. If you use the tic-tac-toe trick, I don't like tricks, but if you use one, a negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. Or you can think, okay, two times two is four. So the opposite of two times two, so negative two times two, has to be negative four, and then flip back. So those are fractions. Now let's look at decimals. Scooch down. All right, now decimals. Dividing with decimals. There are different ways to show division. One of those ways is as a fraction. Fractions are just another way to show division. So if you have 4.2 over negative 2.4, this just means to divide those numbers. Now this isn't very proper because it looks like a fraction and it has decimals in it. And we don't like to mix the two. But if you ever see it like this, the numerator goes inside the house and the denominator goes outside. So if I see something like this, if it starts like this, the first thing I want to do is rewrite it so that I can work it out. So step one, I'm going to rewrite my problem so that inside goes in and outside goes out. So I've got 4.2 is going to go inside and negative 2.4 is going to go outside. Now I have a decimal. And when I have a decimal in my division, the one on the outside is the one I have to manipulate. And when I manipulate this decimal, I'm just going to times it by 10 to move that decimal over one. And if I multiply the top of a fraction by something, I have to multiply the bottom of the fraction by the same thing. So if 2.4 times 10 is 24, then 4.2 times 10 is 42. And that's why I move my decimal over. So the value doesn't change. We're just moving the decimal over so that it's easier to work out. Not so much easier. This is just how we do it. Okay, so step two, I'm gonna move my decimal. And however you move the outside, the inside one moves the same. I'm going to say same space, in and out. So one and one. Or I always thought like they were tied together, so they would they jump the same number of spaces. The goal is to make the outside number a whole number. So if it's 2.4, that's one space. If it was 0.24, how many spaces would you have to move the decimal? 
you'd have to move it two spaces. You want to get that decimal all the way to the end of that number. So now it's set up, and now it's just 42 divided by negative 24. So we're going to divide it like normal. We're going to divide like we would divide decimals. And you've been doing this for years. So 24 can go into 42 once. 1 times 24. Subtract. What do you get? 18. I'm going to add. There's my decimal. I add a 0. Bring it down. So now it's 180. How many times can 24 go into 180? 7 times. 7 times 24, 168, subtract, 12, add another 0, bring it down. How many times can 24 go into 120? 5 times. Now, my last step, my very last step, also, we were dealing with decimals, so we want a decimal answer. We have to assign positive or negative. Is this number a positive or is it a negative? I had a positive divided by a negative, so my answer is going to be negative. So I have negative 1.5. Seven, five. All right, that brings us to the end of rational number operations. And now we get to start using them all of the time. It's going to be awesome. Don't forget to smash the like button, ring the bell to get notifications, and go ahead and subscribe. See you guys later.